Hi, I'm back on the show again with Gary Sikic. Thanks for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me back, Lee. So we're continuing our series discussing about global cyber insecurity as it relates to the energy sector. And the second part series, we're talking more about detection of compromise. Um, Gary, uh, what are your thoughts on this area? Well, I think that there's a lot to be looked at in terms of the detection aspect. And I think this is one of the areas where you, from a forensic standpoint, uh, provide sort of a critical v juncture. What are you seeing that the general person and even the general employee of a utility might not be seeing and might not be aware of? Well, well, we know from reports by Dragos, a cybersecurity firm, that there's a number of groups, I, I think around 11 groups, are specifically targeting the energy sector. This report just came out this month. So there is a, a heightened attack uh, readiness requirement uh, to defend against these attacks. And, and, and the key thing that organizations need to be doing is they, they need to know that they have their firewall actively logging and they need to be looking at those logs. But those are all state-sponsored groups, right? Um, well, we don't know exactly who they are. There, there could be terrorist cells. Uh, the Dragos report doesn't give attribution as to the entities behind them. They describe the types of attacks and the character of the attack methods. But there's a number of them that y you can check out. Uh, there's a link that will take you to their report if you're interested in reading it. But you know, oftentimes organizations fall compromised and they don't know it. And, and these things go on for, for a long time. There was a credit reporting agency attack recently, for instance. So from a detection standpoint, the challenge that industries are faced with, and because our focus is going to be on the energy industry, so we'll look at energy industry in general, the challenge that they face then is that it's not just what we perceive could be state-sponsored hacking of their systems. It could be individuals, it could be terrorist cells, <laughs> it could be no. pretty much anyone with a desire to infiltrate a system, whether it's yeah. to do harm or whether it's just to see if they exactly. can do it. Exactly. The barrier to entry to launching one of these attacks is much lower. It requires knowledge, but the knowledge could be in the in the head of a, a teenager mm -hmm. that uh, got rejected at school and wants to uh, show wants, wants to take the power out in his town. So that, that's a, a legitimate problem. Now, re related to detection, I mentioned the firewall logs, uh, there's a great product out there called a canary. Have you heard of it? No. It's new uh, to me. Uh, yes. Essentially, it's, uh, it's a company, they sell these little devices you deploy on your network and they can pretend to be a payroll NAS, healthcare information system, storage database, or you, know, you, you can make it be whatever you want, but it's essentially trying to lure an attacker. So if someone's on your network, they're gonna scan your network to look for resources and it will detect people trying to brute force that item. So these are these items are a great way to have another way of knowing are you compromised. If organizations uh, that had recently been publicly compromised that didn't know it for many years had some of these devices in place, they would probably know pretty quickly, like within a day or so, if someone gets them through their firewall. So then, the challenge then, I guess, from a detection standpoint, and the way we've seen it in discussion with, with organizations that I've worked with, is that it's not a single point of, of penetration that we have to worry about. It's, it's become multiple points of pe penetration and multiple points that are not necessarily hardwired into the operating system. So utilities, in a lot of respect, have gone out to do with their SCADA systems uh, monitoring your water usage, your electric usage, all remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, and you periodically might see a utility vehicle drive by and they may have a cellular type phone system that goes by and scans your homes to see what your energy usage is. So th those all become a factor. Mm -hmm. We get into detection in terms of things we mentioned. Today, shipping is a big issue, and we mentioned what, uh, the current situation with Iran, the concern over the Strait of Hormuz, but shipping in general, mm -hmm. uh, navigation systems have been targeted, uh, not only by you know, state actors, but by 
other groups. So you have navigation systems, which is not just waterborne shipping. Think of where navigation systems are today. Look into your pocket and see your cell phone. Uh, exactly. Well, uh, we had the recent uh, the recent issue with the Boeing Max uh, airplane. Uh, it turned out that the sensors were damaged. Well, these sensors they're called MEMS sensors. Mm -hmm. They're a combination of electromechanical sensor, and if the chip is hit at the frequency that matches the natural frequency of the component board, it can actually cause the chip to malfunction and report erroneous readings temporarily. Or if the, the, the frequency matches and it's of a great enough amplitude, it can actually damage the chip. There hasn't been much discussions about whether these chips were cyber attacked, but mm -hmm. it's very plausible. Uh, if you look up University of Michigan, they have research on MEMS chip sensors. And interestingly enough, the patent for these sensors, it was a Boeing patent. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of talk about that. And I think more likely if those chips were damaged, it's more likely that they were damaged while they were on the ground. Interestingly enough, and the two crashes that occurred were in countries that had a lot of terrorist activity. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the other aspect with detection is that when you begin to bring out a point like that, people have a tendency to assume durability of systems when systems can be very sensitive to, uh, if you will, shocks, minor shocks to the system. So no, it's, it's not necessarily a, a physical attack. Uh, you can take the example recently, no. Puerto Rico has had uh, an earthquake. What damages were uh, in, incurred by the, mm -hmm. uh, on their systems as a result that are undetected yet? No. Um, s the sensitivity of systems, I think, has become really yeah. critical in a lot of these aspects. But like with these chips, I, we're blending mechanical with computer embedded mm -hmm. processors, so like these chips, uh, think of an opera singer that sings the the natural frequency of a wine glass. If if he sings it loud enough, that glass will shatter. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept with this chip. You can fire sound at it if you're close enough, or if you have a strong enough amplifier, you can fry it. Now that could happen. A, a drone could potentially launch a sonic mm -hmm. attack. Someone on board, a passenger. Uh, could do it. Cleaning crew coming through could do it. So these are these are some questions that um, you know it's kind of a new paradigm. But we we even had issues with military aircraft having this uptick in crashes. And these same type of systems are in the newer military hel helicopters and mm -hmm. planes and whatnot. So I think it was good that the military grounded some of these devices. That we're having these problems and you know the investigation i'm sure continues and the public may not fully be briefed on this but uh it is a threat that uh, needs to be detected before people die so the the, the real issue with the situation that we're, ha we're in of this kind of global insecurity if you will is our ability to detect has been if I'll put it in these terms, our ability to detect, to detect has been compromised by virtue of the disruptive technologies that exist that are making detection mm. more and more of a challenge because they're becoming more and more subtle in how they interdict the system. So I can have a system that looks like it's working perfectly and yet at a point be compromised, yeah. like the mechanical system yeah. that's supposed to open a valve and it's been doing it for a long time, and then suddenly it no. either leaves it open or completely shuts no. it. And th this is where it's important that these entities have an accurate inventory of what their equipment is, and they also have an accurate inventory of the embedded systems and what that software code should look like, and they should have procedures in place to periodically verify that the embedded firmware and chips that do these functions haven't been altered. Otherwise, they won't even know, and something could happen at, at a very critical time. So that, that wraps up our section on detection. Uh, in our next segment, we'll be talking about helping to protect against these type of attacks.